Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be diving a little bit deeper into boundary and continuity conditions as it pertains to the double integration method, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. What are boundary and continuity conditions? Well, they represent known values at specific points of restraint on a system, okay? So it's where we know something, okay? And typically they're of restraint, but not necessarily. I mean, they could also be where you have uh, discontinuity points, okay? So, um, so that's what generally they refer to. Now, when we think of boundary conditions, BCs is what we abbreviate them as, as these are typically external pins, rollers, and fixed connections. So these are boundary conditions, specifically boundary conditions, all right? So for example, let's think about a fixed connection here, and we got like a little segment, okay? Now at that fixed connection, if this thing is loaded, all right, then what is the uh, deform shape gonna be? Well, there's gonna be a taper here, and it might look something like this, all right? And so at that fixed point right here, you're gonna have no deflection and no rotation, all right? So these represent boundary conditions on a fixed connection. What if you have an external pin, okay? And maybe you've got a load there, all right? If this thing is allowed to deform, it could deform something like this, okay? And what are you gonna have at that external pin? Well, you're definitely gonna have no deflection, okay? The reason why you have no deflection is because the pin, this external pin is restraining the beam from actually moving. But you will have a rotation, all right? So if we put a tangent line right here, you're gonna have a rotation angle theta that's not equal to zero, all right? And in a similar fashion, rollers, external rollers will work the same way, all right? Let's say you got a, a roller there and it deforms and you know you've got this deformed shape like this so the deflection at the roller is still going to be zero just like for a pin all right because again that roller is preventing the beam at that specific point from translating all right but what you will have is a rotation angle so if i put a tangent line here I'm gonna have a theta is not zero there. So these represent boundary conditions, all right? Specifically boundary conditions. Now, what about continuity conditions? They're similar, sometimes a little bit more tricky, but similar. So continuity conditions represent abrupt changes that occur at points on a member's length. That's what we call a continuity condition, and we sometimes abbreviate those as CC. Now, those could also be due to restraints somewhere along the length of the member instead of at its boundaries, okay? But it also could result, continuity conditions can result in other abrupt changes. So for example, let's say I have a simply supported beam and I have a point load here, P, okay? So we know that the deflected shape is gonna be something like this, okay? And, you know, of course, you've got delta is zero at the two ends, and then you have a theta is not zero at the two ends, just like we discussed before. Now, a continuity condition comes into play when you are looking in the vicinity of the applied load. So what you would say is the deflection, I'm gonna change colors here, the deflection just to the left of P is equal to the deflection just to the right of P. So that'll be some kind of value of delta, okay? And so um, that's what we mean by that. The deflection value infinitesimally to the left of P is equal to the deflection value infinitesimally to the right of P. Okay, same thing with theta, okay? The, the rotation angle theta just to the left of P will be equal to the rotation angle theta just to the right of P. 
So what you're looking at is the vicinity right around abrupt changes, okay? So another uh, example of where a continuity condition would arise is, let's say you have a simple beam with a cantilever overhang, okay? And maybe you have some kind of loading here, all right? So a continuity condition would also arise just to the left and just to the right of the roller. So what you would say is the deflection just to the left of the roller is equal to the deflection just to the right of the roller. And same thing with uh, the rotation angle theta, just to the left and just to the right is equal to each other, okay? So again, continuity conditions, they work similar to boundary conditions, but they're sometimes a little bit more tricky to wrap your mind around. So let's look at uh, some example beams where we just investigate these boundary and continuity conditions, okay? So let's scroll down and we're gonna say uh, BC and CC example, all right? So given to us, we're being told for each loaded beam, determine the boundary and continuity conditions. All right, let's start with beam A, pretty simple. We have a cantilever beam, it has a length L, and has a point load at the free end, and the origin is the fixed end at the left side, and positive X is pointing to the right. So what I would do is, the first thing I would do is sketch the deflected shape of this, okay? So we know that there's a taper at the fixed end and it's gonna curve concave down, okay? Let me draw that a little bit better for us, okay? So what are the boundary and continuity conditions here? Well, um, first, are there any continuity conditions? And the answer is no, you do not have any abrupt changes along the length of this beam, right? No abrupt changes, all right? So no continuity conditions, but you do have boundary conditions at the boundary, right? At the fixed connection. And so we're gonna say delta when x equals zero is equal to zero, okay? What that means is the deflection when the x variable is equal to zero, which means you're right here at the fixed connection, is equal to zero. And we're also gonna say theta when x equals zero is equal to zero, okay? So again, when x equals zero and you're at the fixed connection, theta is equal to zero. Now, my notation here, um, it's, a, it's like function notation, okay? So another way of writing this is delta equals zero when x equals zero. And another way of writing this is theta equals zero when x equals zero. So it's function notation with me saying equals zero inside of the parentheses. So this is not multiplication, okay? It's function notation, all right? What about uh, beam B here? Beam B looks a lot like beam A. You have a cantilever beam, length L, point load at the free end, but here your origin is on the right side and we're saying uh, X pointing to the left is positive. So based on where your origin is, that's gonna influence how you write your boundary or continuity conditions. And again, here we just have boundary conditions, okay? So we're gonna say delta when X equals L is zero and theta when X equals L is also zero. Where am I coming up with that? Well, again, look where your origin is. Your origin's at the right side, okay? So that means that the value of x equals L puts you at the left side where the fixed connection is. And that's where delta and theta are both zero, all right? Let's scroll down. Let's look at a couple more, all right? Um, so in uh, beam C, we have a simply supported beam and we got a point load. Um, acting on it. Oh, by the way, if I were to, hang on, let me back up for a second. If I go back to beam B, the deflection diagram is the same shape as it was on beam A in case that wasn't obvious. All right, <laughs> so beam C. Um, you have the simply supported beam with a point load somewhere in between the supports, right? Uh, distance L1 from the left support and L2 from the right support. Total length is L, all right? Your origin is on the left side. X pointing to the right is positive. So how is this thing gonna deflect? Well, you're gonna have uh, a nice smooth curve and um, you're gonna have um, 
kind of it, you know, the maximum is going to be directly under P here. So not necessarily in the middle, not, not in the middle. It's at L1 slash L2 where those dimension lines change. All right. So let's talk about the boundary conditions. Um, hopefully the boundary conditions are pretty clear. All right. So delta uh, when X equals zero is zero, right? So that means that delta at the pin is zero. We also have delta when x equals L is zero. That means that when your x value is equal to L, that puts you at the roller and delta is zero at the roller, okay? Now here we do have continuity conditions, all right? We did not have them in beams A and B, but we do in beam C. So let's talk about continuity conditions. Again, we're looking at the vicinity of where of the point load P, okay? So what we're gonna say is that the deflection when X equals L1 just to the left, didn't mean to scroll there, is gonna, oh man, I keep scrolling. My hand keeps hitting the iPad in a weird way. When X equals L1 is equal to the deflection when x equals l1 just to the right. So I put a little plus sign there. All right, look at this notation. This takes us back to calculus one, all right? So we use this little superscript negative sign and superscript positive sign to mean just to the left or just to the right. Again, that's like uh, the notation you used in Cal 1 when you were studying limits, all right? So um, basically what you're looking at is as X approaches L on the left of P, that better be that deflection better be equal to the value of, uh, of the deflection when X is equal to L1 just to the right of P. okay? So that's the notation. That's one continuity condition. And similarly, we're going to say theta when X equals L1 just to the left of P is equal to theta when x equals L1 just to the right. There I go with that scrolling again, just to the right, okay? So again, that means that the deflection just to the left of P equals the deflection just to the right, and the uh, slope angle theta just to the left equals uh, the slope angle just to the right. So these are your continuity conditions, all right, for beam C. What about beam D? What about beam D, okay? So we take a look at beam D. We have a simple beam with a cantilever overhang, and we've got uh, a uniform load W, and we've got an L1 and an L2 and a total L here, all right? Now, how is this gonna deflect? Well, it depends on uh, length L1 and L2. It really depends on which one is longer. It also depends on the kind of the magnitude of W, but uh, chances are um, this is probably going to deflect something like this, okay? So it might pipe, pop up a little bit here. You might have a upward deflection here. Again, it depends on the magnitude of W, and it really depends on how long L1 and L2 are with respect to each other. But regardless, you get this kind of deflect, deflected shape, all right? And so what are our boundary conditions? So our boundary conditions are gonna be delta when x equals zero is zero, and delta when x equals L1 is also zero, all right? That's gonna put us at the pin when x equals zero and the roller when x equals L1. Both of those deflections are zero. Now, what about a continuity condition, CC, okay? Do we have an abrupt change along the total length of this beam? Yeah, absolutely. The presence of the roller represents an abrupt change along the entire length, all right? So what we're gonna say here is that the deflection at X equals L1 just to the left of that roller is equal to the deflection when X equals L1 just to the right. Okay, so again, the deflection infinitesimally to the left of the roller equals the deflection infinitesimally to the right of the roller, all right? And then similarly, 
theta when x equals L1 just to the left of the roller equals theta when x equals L1 just to the right of the roller, all right? Now, why do we need to use all of these? Well, big, big star right here. We use BCs and CCs to solve for integration constants in the double integration method, okay? So the double integration method will pop out constants of integration, okay? The same constants of integration like you studied way back in calculus one or calculus two. So you gotta solve for those and we use boundary conditions and continuity conditions to solve for those integration constants, okay? So that wraps up this video. Hopefully this was helpful to you and you learned a little bit more about boundary and continuity conditions for the sake of the double integration method. If you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and be on the lookout for other videos like this. Thanks for watching.